I like the movie. <laughs> what made you like it? Why did you like it? Uh, it was a good idea uh, to uh, create this plot of uh, this film, and I uh, like this actor since uh, it's uh, really interesting. But I, I, I like it. Okay, okay. What about you, girls? It's a good film for Christmas Eve, for example, mm. for Christmas holiday. It's uh, so without. Uh, any drama or something serious problems but just uh, just for rest and yeah. uh, just a bit of a fairy tale as well <laughs> <laughs> okay okay uh, as they say a uh, feel good movie right uh you watch it and you sort of feel okay everything ended well nothing serious i don't have mm -hmm. to think about world problems and stuff like that right mm -hmm. okay what mm -hmm. about you nastya I agree with Natalia. This uh, this film is a good choice for Christmas cozy evening. Okay. Uh, so, has it been the first time uh, that you watched it, or have you seen it several times? Because the I've seen time. it like the first time. Uh, the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the first time as well. Wow, interesting. I'm so usually I'm so happy when people see something for the first time because it means, you know, like. If I didn't do that, uh, you wouldn't probably have seen it. I mean, probably you would, but so much uh, later. So um, you liked it. Okay, that's good. So um, the next question in the list was, what was the most emotional moment for you? And are you satisfied with the ending? Uh, because some people, at least I read a lot of reviews, and some people said, well, the ending is so you know typical, but not very realistic, stuff like that. So what, do, what did you think about it? Mm. Uh, one uh, scene when uh, I don't uh, I, I, I don't remember about uh, different between Amanda and uh, next uh, another Iris 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 it's from British yes yes yeah. uh, so uh, Amanda met with uh, uh, Iris uh, brother and uh, after his uh, home party said about uh, 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 can we have a sex and uh, this moment uh, I actually <laughs> think about uh, uh, w w what will uh, she answer on this uh, on this question for me it was really interesting uh, moment, <laughs> decision yeah. yes mm -hmm. well it's a very straightforward thing to say I mean people don't usually behave like that I mean mm, People probably do. <laughs> for, for Especially me. for a woman. For a woman, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but after your article about uh, how uh, it can be different uh, if this film uh, launched in this moment, I uh, I noticed that uh, actually everything changed and in the world. Uh, many <laughs> many uh, interesting uh, things can happen. Uh, probably, probably. Uh, unusual, unusual. Uh, okay. For uh, for example, something about Tinder, I, I don't remember. So. Yeah. At yeah. this moment, I notice that I'm so old, o older than <laughs> many people in the world. Yeah, yeah, I, I I have this feeling too. Like I'm lagging behind everybody else, and uh, I used to be, you know, to make fun a fun of all the people when I was young. I mean, like when I was twenty, I was like, ah. Oh. All, all the people always say that and now I think mm, <laughs> I start I start sounding like old people uh, okay what about you Natasha uh, well maybe the most emotional moment when was um, Iris uh, was uh, in in Los Angeles and um, her ex uh, visited her and uh, she broke up with him it was it was a bit um, in a comedian style because uh, remember she said let me put the lights on just to, for you to see me <laughs> very properly <laughs> and as if she were preparing for something like a like a speech you know and uh, uh, she was very pathetic but uh, it was um, uh, seeing how difficult it was for her to go through all these uh, words and actually it was a very uh, he was a, a very um, 
he provoked her and it was difficult for her but she, at the end she won yeah she behaved like uh, a better person like a new iris i uh, thought like she has some new strengths or mm -hmm. something like like you said a gumption i found something like gumption, gumption. Mm -hmm. what about as, you not sorry no as for the end of the film you asked yes well uh, it, uh I remember you mentioned it you was said a that bit, it sounded yes. like a bit, a bit like a fairy tale, and I um, wanted to ask if it's like totally unrealistic or it's one of the options that could have happened. You know, like yes. one of the yeah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, the most uh, how to say what moment emotional emotional moment for me. Uh, from this movie is when this old director, I don't remember his um, okay. Mr. I, just a second. Mr. Arthur, director. Arthur Albert or something like that. Arthur. Uh, Arthur, Arthur, I think. Arthur. Arthur, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when this uh, old Mr. Arthur uh, came into the hall full of applauses by his own hand without any help, that was... <laughs> That was great, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I actually like uh, this, um, I don't know how to say, uh, line or theme. You know, it's not just about uh, romantic relationships uh, or at least, you know, like romance or sex or whatever. But it's also about friendship. I think it was very important in this movie, the friendship between Iris and uh, this older man, uh, how he actually helped her develop throughout the movie. Uh, in, instead of you know psychologist or coach or something some of his remarks and observations it just uh, it, it will be later the question but it's one of my favorite you know scenes uh when he says remember that um like you behave um like a best friend uh, like uh, the heroine's mm -hmm. best friend instead of behaving like the lead as uh, the lead uh lead is like the main actress uh, you are the lead, but you behave like uh, the lead's mm -hmm. best friend. Uh, it was yeah. sort of like really important for her, but also important for me. Uh, so, yeah. And for me, this um, line in this movie, the r relationship between Iris and this old director is the most realistic uh, story. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because there is something a little bit too cute i guess uh, about the relationship between amanda and graham and also a little bit uh, i i wouldn't even say cute but funny about the relationship between um iris, iris and, and... Uh, what's his name oh my god i forgot uh but uh this relationship like you said uh between iris and arthur i think it was the the deepest and the most interesting one yeah and the realistic too Okay, thank you. So interesting. Um, so, what? Uh, who would you say was your favorite character? Amanda. Amanda. Why? <laughs> because she's uh, full of energy. Um, she's smart because uh, she has her own company. Um, I don't know. She, she's alive, you know not uh -huh. not yeah. like opposite to iris uh -huh. because for me iris is sorry but she's not interesting okay. person only my opinion okay. she's pathetic i would say <laughs> okay, she's cameron it's... diaz she is very interesting person uh, well, uh, somebody even says that she's pathetic at the beginning of the movie and i agree because at the beginning of the movie she was pathetic um so uh interesting interesting what about you natasha and with me quite opposite uh amanda is a bit business more business like for me she's uh, more american and i like uh, uh iris. Uh, iris because she is a real woman for me she is full of feelings she lives uh, uh, but by he, her heart not by her mind maybe sometimes uh, but uh, through the whole film she learns to live not only with her feelings but with her uh, a new word what it gump mind uh, with gumption well it's like the strength of character something like that right mm -hmm. so but she was very kind 
person she is very um easy for help and uh, uh, she is a family woman uh, uh, i mean that she cares about her family uh and uh, what else uh, she is she is um how to say um, she's sincere she's open okay and, uh, yes and when you say she's easy uh for help you mean like she's supportive of others right yes she's uh -huh. supportive and she's caring mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, okay. maybe this is a person that it is difficult for her to say no something of the kind <laughs> well pro maybe but maybe not it depends uh, on the context um Igor, what about you who's your favorite character cameron diaz yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> Uh, actually, the first scene was uh, in my. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about uh, taxi driver. I don't know. Uh, maybe nobody uh, uh, think, thinking about it. But actually, it was Graham, I don't, uh, the brother of uh, Iris. I think uh, that uh, it's a good person because he uh, has uh, to. Uh, two daughters and try to be a good father mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean i'm a woman that's why i'm probably pre prejudiced but yes <laughs> i like him most of all <laughs> so la camera and dios is okay but this <laughs> this uh, <laughs> uh yeah he's play. a single father and he's a widow yeah single, so uh, single father, yes. audience always sympathizes uh, with such characters and besides he's mm -hmm. nice so yeah uh so let's let's discuss him he was mentioned um, in the cosmopolitan magazine as uh, the best man to exist uh to, to what extent do you agree or disagree with this assessment and why would they say so exist what does it mean exist? Uh, существовать, uh, to ever be to ever exist so, so as uh, as Graham as a person in this film or uh, well, this if, actor? If, if girl, no, no, if girl, no, no, not actor. Like a character, you know. Like um, if a girl starts thinking, uh, what I would like in my partner, I would like him to be kind. I would like him to be this and to be that. And basically, all these qualities are embodied in in this character in graham's character so would you i don't that? know maybe cosmopolitan is wrong because actually all uh i i think that all uh women would like to bad uh, <laughs> bad boys uh, bad boys and uh, this person not for bad birth uh, but uh, a person of boys uh, i don't know uh it's like some, some un unreal so something he, unreal he, okay too good to uh, be true as they say yeah, too too good yes mm -hmm. it's too Agreed good to be this true. expression mm -hmm. too good to be true um usually people talk about deals like this deal is too good to be true probably something fishy there uh it's suspicious uh but in this case we're talking about a personality so it, he's he's too good to be true um but okay. sorry but actually he's not so good um uh, as far as i remember graham has a problem with uh, drinking uh -huh. do you remember the reason why he uh, stay at night at the iris slash amanda's home uh -huh. because he was uh, too drunk and it was not the first time when he he's too drunk to uh, drive home and let's remember that he has two daughters alone or with a babysitter at home and he is drunk at sister house so he kind of not so perfect <laughs> sounds like not so perfect guy okay that's a very good point uh and we also know i think he mentioned that uh when he talked to amanda that he spends a lot of time uh a lot of free time in a pub in the yes. local pub it's basically mm -hmm. his only place where he you know he's not at home because he spends the rest of his time uh, either working or at home with his daughters i sort of understand why he does that uh why he drinks sometimes uh, i'm not sure how much of a drunk he is you know uh, alcoholic or i mean uh i'm not sure he's an alcoholic but um 
Yeah, he's not. I'm saying that it's the, the uh, difference between uh, Ukrainian uh, and maybe Russian and maybe British because, uh, as I saw from a lot of films uh, that I uh, watched uh, last time, uh, in every film they drink, drink a lot, drink uh, uh, in many situations. Maybe it's uh, like I don't know usual life of every single British man. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I watch a lot of movies and TV shows, but I can't be sure because they don't seem to, at least in, in the ones that I watch, uh, they don't seem to drink too much. And besides, I wanted, when you started saying about Ukrainian, Russian and British, I, I thought you were going to mention this. Uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of people here who drink and then still drive because they think, ah, like two, uh, you know, glasses of beer is nothing, you know, like it's okay. Um, British and American people, most of them, not all of them, uh, are more law abiding. And I think they are more strict with, you know, like if I drank something, I wouldn't drive, even if I have a car and something like that. So maybe he wasn't like drunk, drunk. He was just tipsy and <clears throat> he decided to play it safe. You know, not to risk anything. Okay, mm -hmm. Natasha, do you have any opinion on this matter? Like how yes. ideal? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, so I, I would say that uh, for me, um, that he was drunk. Uh, that uh, you know, uh, it makes his character to be real. Actually, that he is not an ideal. And I have. Um, uh, uh, so he probably, uh, as he said. Uh, uh, he was, um, how to say it, uh, he was rather, uh, for me, he is uh, a person of a new masculinity, as psychologists say. Uh -huh. Nowadays, a new masculinity means that a person is not like a uh, skala, da, but he has got uh -huh. feelings. Yeah, no uh, much, no, not a much, but new masculinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, new masculinity. He is not afraid just to be, uh, to be with his feelings, to open his feelings to others, and uh, um, what else I wanted? As for drinking, probably he was uh, very impressed by his loss, and he couldn't. Uh, uh, so there was a big stress in his life. I mean, when he lost his wife, and maybe uh, I'm sure uh, I'm. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that yeah. He, yeah, that that was connected uh, uh, not uh, with his uh, Tiago Calcavolo, uh -huh. but with his I loss. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and maybe when his life is more um, hard to stable, say, is yeah. more stable and less stressful, then it will be okay with his um, mm -hmm. okay. with his drinks. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, uh, all people have stress in their lives, but uh, if there is too much stress, uh, mm -hmm. if there is any stress, you need to find a way out for this stress. Some people exercise in the gym, some people sing, some people, I don't know, uh, do stuff. Uh, so if there is mm -hmm. nothing like that, then people, a lot of people just do drinking, you know. Um, maybe it was his sort of way out. Uh, I don't know. In my, on my screen, Igor is in two places at once. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a problem. But there are two Igors here right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so the next question we have here is: <clears throat> I don't know if you like this question or not, uh, but I decided to put it in. So, what type of man did each of the female characters initially settle for? Um, do you know the expression "settle for something" or "for somebody"? It's like agree to something, even though you are you don't like it very much, but you sort of agree to that. So you settle. Uh, for example, uh, Iris settled for this uh, jerk. What is what is he? Jasper, 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 something like that. And um, Amanda settled for her ex boyfriend now. So why did they settle for those men? Why did they agree to have relationships with them? I don't know. <clears throat> Girls, you, you neither? Me neither. 
uh, maybe yeah. low self-esteem or just they didn't want to be alone something of the kind okay as for iris i would go with uh low self-esteem she probably mm -hmm. didn't think uh, i i think she thought that she that jasper was the best she could get uh, so yes probably low self-esteem in amanda's case i guess it's uh -huh. something different uh, in Amanda's case, maybe she wanted to have a very good picture for the surroundings. That she is, uh, I remember, um, I've got the best house, I've got the best career, and I've got the best uh, boyfriend. Something of the kind to be to be at the top, maybe. Uh huh. Because I have a different theory. I think she settled for her boyfriend uh just because she was too busy and didn't have time to look for somebody else you know like mm -hmm. a, a business owner usually you you are busy and um sometimes relationships suffer and i guess she was you know, like okay let let him be uh i mean let him stay uh, but uh at a certain point uh they had this argument and he cheated on her and i guess this was mm, the last straw as they say right okay um mm -hmm. uh there was uh, question number six i came up with this question after reading some article about emotional manipulation and i noticed one of the phrases there uh which i wanted to discuss with you so uh how does this film depict emotional manipulation that uh iris's and amanda's exes used against them did you notice any emotional manipulation in the film Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jasper was manipulated. No, Iris was manipulated by Jasper in this film, definitely. How, in in uh, what way? What was the manipulation? What did he do? Uh, he he used her feelings uh, for career for his own career. Uh, as uh, as I remember, he was a journalist too, as a, as an Iris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He worked in the magazine, yes. Mm -hmm. He worked in the magazine and he was prepared, he prepared some article or, or book, mm -hmm. something bigger than just mm -hmm. an art, uh, article in magazine. And he asked uh, Iris to help him mm -hmm. and definitely use the... Um, use her expertise, right? Use her expertise, yeah. And he know, um, he knew. He knew that she not in in a position to say no. To say no, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So she he was basically using her, and why didn't she realize that he was using her? Because she fall in love. <laughs> okay, uh, but okay, okay, okay. Uh, we can we can continue that, Natasha. Do you have anything to say? Because uh, it was like an addiction for her, like a bad habit, something of the kind. She couldn't uh, stop uh, uh, this feeling for him. Uh, but you know, uh, there is a difference between unrequited love, when you love somebody and they don't love you. At some point, uh, you just realize that it's hopeless and you stop. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it happened to me several times, uh, and I know how it works. Uh, but in this case, it wasn't exactly a, the unrequited love. I mean, he didn't love her, she loved him, he didn't love her. But also, why it was in manipulation, also he gave her signals that he sort of was interested, he, he sort of liked her, or he wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. So he gave her mixed signals. And um, the article that I mentioned, about emotional manipulation there is a special term for that i mean there are ter so many terms i didn't know about you know for example this one is called breadcrumbing uh, i will write it down maybe you will uh, so breadcrumbs uh, like uh, хлеб and crumbs это uh, крошки so breadcrumb это крошка крошка хлеба uh, and mm -hmm. breadcrumbing means it's like giving short small uh, like pieces signals like uh, you are interested you wouldn't mind remember this um last scene when mm -hmm. they broke up like uh she finally caught him doing that because previously she didn't even realize that he was doing that she would ask him a question he would answer in an ambiguous way that could be interpreted this way or that way, there is no certain answer. And when she finally wanted some certainty, uh, he was like, 
looking at her and not saying anything. And she finally realized that he was manipulating her, Brett Pramming. Uh, so it was an interesting read for me. Uh, as long, uh, uh, some, some other phrases like ghosting and stuff like that. Okay, uh, next question we have here is, most romantic comedies don't age well. In what ways has this film aged well and in, in what ways it hasn't? I don't, uh, I, I didn't uh, um, notice that uh, this film aged. For me, it's uh, okay. I, I actually, I'm thinking about uh, to buy uh, CD discs, but actually, after that, you share this article, I uh, I understood that uh, actually at this moment maybe I don't find any any CD disc because you can find everything you want in the internet. Uh, so for, for 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 me, I I I, uh, I don't I I didn't feel that it's uh, it's old older. Uh, film for me, it's film. Okay, film, and uh, uh, um, I I didn't have feeling about uh, age. This film. Uh huh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for you, it seemed quite relevant and contemporary, right? Maybe uh, I uh, stay at uh, ten years before. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but well, actually, I don't think so. Uh, you would uh, notice, I guess. You would notice if something really. Uh, I, I think that it's uh, some uh, fantasy of uh, one uh, person, and uh, actually, I think that it can happen at this moment too. Why? Uh, why we don't? Uh, we didn't. Uh, now we can't uh, swap house. This is interesting uh, idea swap house at this moment maybe other uh, services can uh, uh, can help you at this moment but uh, actually maybe it's a good idea for new business after this film i, I don't know <laughs> you do want to swap houses with me <laughs> no i'm sorry uh, i think that you don't uh, want it true because uh, you and me is so uh strict person and uh, with uh, uh space around you it's more important for for you for, yeah yeah for, and for also you. i have cats uh, okay <laughs> okay okay uh what about you girls i agree with sigurd actually okay mm. Mm. I feel like I'm agree too, but I th think I should uh, said something, say something different. <laughs> <laughs> there is no should here, you know. It's, you, it's too easy to say. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, yeah, I mm, I did not feel this film mm, like uh, aged. Uh, maybe some points uh, like. Uh, habits I don't know some kind of clothes uh, that's all mm -hmm. okay uh, usually when people uh, I read uh, again one of the reviews something like that was mentioned they are uh, you know like about aging uh, but when they talk about uh, films aging they don't usually talk about you know clothes or technology because it's obvious uh, the technology will be of that time uh, not recent but um, what they talk about when they talk about aging is, for example, um, you know, sometimes you watch some older movie from the 80s, for example, from the 70s. And the way men and women talk, how men, for example, are so uh, dismissive of women or something like that. And you think, oh, my God, nowadays nobody would say something like that. You know, it, it, she would slap him on the face or she, uh, he would get you know fired from work or something like that so but nothing like that i guess happened here they all behave more or less you know like normal contemporary people nowadays right okay so um next question is sort of theoretical it's good practice for conditional so if you were a writer or the producer or director what would you change in the film Maybe small detail, the color of the eyes, or I don't know, a different. I would change. I would change the. I I would give more clarity for the end of this film because it's not clear 
how these uh, relationships will develop in the future? Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, it's so unclear. I was, I mean, the first time I watched it, you know, like when I was much younger, like 15 years ago or something, I was quite happy with the ending and I was like, oh, no, no, nice film. And now I, I, I sat after the film, and then what? <laughs> You know, like, and what happens next? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, everybody can imagine what would happen next after that. So if you uh, finish film in uh, one way, but everybody can imagine how it can happen, which, in uh, which uh, situation. Uh, well, most provocative films, you know, serious films, it's a good thing uh, when they have sort of like a little bit open ending when you keep thinking about it. But in romantic comedies, usually it's much more definite. It's much more certain, you know, like, uh, you know, like in fairy tales and they lived happily ever after, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So here, yes, it actually didn't say how they lived happily ever after, if they got married, if they moved to, you know, like switched con continents or if they broke as, up. As real life, you don't know what happened next day. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Natasha? I would add I would add a scene like uh, one Christmas later or something like in a year. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, that would be much more definite. Okay, thank you. And uh, what movies or books does this film remind you of, if it does? Actually, I want to read uh, your uh, questions before our uh, meeting because... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I mean, it's not a lesson. There is no, you know, like I'm not going to give you grades or something. It's just if nothing to say, then we'll just move on. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about <laughs> books, of what I, I read actually in my life and I uh, thinking about maybe I, I read uh, not a lot books because <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> fine, it's fine. I mean, uh, I, d I don't even read books uh, of this type, you know, like rom romance. This is a separate genre. I mean, uh, I can't say that I've never read them. I uh, read some romance when I was much, much, much younger and I read uh, the last romance I read it was actually two years ago, and it was it was okay, uh, but it was not about women; it was about men, young men. Um, so I, I don't see the direct connection; it's just the genre is the same. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what it makes me think about is our next movie in our movie club because it's also a romance. I don't know if you like like if you would like having two movies of the same genre you know, in a row, but I hope you will like it. It's called, uh, you probably heard about it. It's called uh, Pride and Prejudice. And uh, it's based on the classical Jane Austen uh, novel. Um, so also love, also romance, also relationships and uh, some comic elements there. So it's it's one of my favorite movies. Not, not the top five, but in the top 15, I guess. This so, famous British actor from, yes, uh, I don't remember. Uh, okay. it's an, it was Kira Knightley, she's the actress, and the actor is uh, Matthew... McConaughey? No. no, 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 not McConaughey. Oh my Kira God. Knightley is <laughs> okay, I like Star Wars, okay. Star Wars, okay. <laughs> Oh my God! I actually like this actor. No, I'm sorry. In there was uh, Natalie Portman in the Star Wars. No. Natalie Kira Portman. Kira mm -hmm. Okay, I quit next uh, movie. Hang out. Uh, okay. <laughs> with, with, without Natalie Portman, I don't know. Yes, not not Natalie Portman yet. Uh, I mean, uh, at least uh, in the next couple of movies, there is no Natalie Portman, as far as I remember. Uh, so uh, romances. Okay, uh, what movies, uh, we, we already discussed that. Uh, what's your most favorable, uh, uh, memorable quote? I already mentioned mine about the lead and the lead's uh, best friend. Uh, did you have anything like that? Something that was said? 
in the movie. No, it's okay. No. Uh, I I um, usually use websites because uh, if I start just taking notes while watching the movie, I'll spoil the fun. So I usually just after the movie look at the. Um, let me share my screen very briefly. Um, my screen and tab this one. Uh, this is the first one here. I don't know. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, Arthur is talking this old man. Iris, in the movies, we have leading ladies, like uh, and we have the best friend. So uh, you, I can tell, are a leading lady. But for some reason, you are behaving like the best friend. And uh, she answers, you're so right, you're supposed to be... Uh, and after that, I remember she mentioned something like, uh, I, I have been paying my psychologist, but you actually helped me more than uh, the psychologist or something like that. Uh, okay, so I'll stop sharing. Uh, just in case, if you want to, you can always look up the quotes uh, afterwards or, you know, look in the group. Sometimes I share them in the group, my favorite. Okay, and... Uh, did you watch the movie in English or in your native language? I watched in it in Russian. Russian. Uh -huh. in, in, English. in English and in, in Ukrainian. Ukrainian. So, Natasha, did you notice any interesting new phrases? Maybe not new, but just interesting, catchy. Mm. No, I just noticed that it was easy for, for, for a beginner. The, the, the tempo speed was rather slow and uh, it was easy. Yeah, yes. normal conversation in English, nothing, nothing very mm -hmm. strange uh, or like no terminology and stuff like that. So basically how people talk in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, quite easy to understand. Um, okay, so basically we have covered all the questions. Uh, I wanted to share um, the um, movie worksheet that I created recently based on this movie to show you what's inside maybe you will uh you will be interested uh in having a look at that uh just a second and if you have already bought maybe it will help you uh, figure out how to use it so i'm sharing my uh, screen mm. entire screen no sorry Okay, so here it is. It's the Russian version because I have two versions, just simply English. So explanations are in English without translation. This is with the translations. So uh, on the first page, you have the film summary, a little bit of reading and some glossary. Uh, here you can see some usual phrases. For example, the, you know the word is, you know the word about, but as the phrase is about to do something, it's actually very, very widely used, but not a lot of people, Russian, or Ukrainian speaking people use it. Um, so stuff like that, something uh, interesting. And each of them, each of the pages has um, a, an activity that you can uh, complete and check at the end with the key. Uh, this is the character, uh -huh, Miles, his name is Miles, finally. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I created this activity, but I keep forgetting his name. This is the least favorite character of in this movie for me. Um, so uh, why this activity is good, I think, is because it has a lot of you know, useful vocabulary when we describe someone. So a lot of adjectives, a lot of stuff we can say about a person. And uh, here the task is to match uh, the descriptions with the characters and the glossary as well. And uh, also there is a movie dialogue. So the scene is, you probably remember this scene, uh, when the, when he said, is it a date or a job interview? Uh, so it's like their first date. And there are some questions here that you can answer. And again, some very cool expressions. And at the end, there is a key. So if you want, you can uh, do this activity and uh, learn a little bit more vocabulary and uh, practice listening comprehension. So the next movie, as I said, is uh, Pride and Prejudice. It's a classic. And it's really nice because I don't always like, uh, you know, uh, movie adaptations. For example, I didn't like the recent Emma. I mean, I haven't even finished it. I, I started it and didn't like the actress and I stopped. But uh, this one is one of my favorites. And I think um, you will like it. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. So uh, I'll start sharing everything about the movie as always uh, a little bit later next week. 
uh, thank you for joining me and um, this beautiful discussion. Yeah? Will you prepare a worksheet about uh, next movie? I'm not sure because preparing them takes quite a bit of time. I will try to because I li really like this movie. You know, it's one of those movies that I would totally love. It j just depends on my time. Uh, right now I am switching my email provider uh, because the old one sort of... Uh, Anyway, uh, and I have some extra tasks apart from teaching okay. and apart. Yeah. So, but if okay. I uh, can, I will create it because I really love this movie and I would really love to, you know. Uh, I like worksheet about uh, the holiday and uh, I would like to uh, to do something the same about next month. Okay. Okay. It's nice to hear. I'm glad you liked it. Okay, great. So, um that would be all for today. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Today we are ending er earlier, unless you want to say something, you know, to talk about something else, but um, I have no more questions. So uh, that would be all. Okay. See yeah. you in two weeks. Thank you very much for. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Out. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good evening, everyone. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.